I can't, I can't believe that it was just, maybe that's what they told you, two people from, well, but that's not the truth. We can't have, we can't have three people because we'd have a quorum. Exactly, so. exactly. But it was, evidently, somewhere along the line, it was open to the public because there were public people on there, on the bus. I'm going to suspect that it was by invitation. Mm, well, they were signers. I can tell you that. Yeah. So, that, yeah, there wasn't any that were not signers. So, yeah. I'll put it that way. Yeah. I'm just going to um, suggest that if they do, because uh, continue to pursue people for the bus tours, that it's balanced out for you guys. Um, there's also um, an event going on in February in Trufant where they're going to have speakers come in and talk about the opposite <laughs> of the bus tour. So I would just encourage, if you guys are going to consider going on the bus tour, that you look at the other side of the coin also. That's in true fact. February 5th. Mm -hmm. February 5th. At the, at the wildflower. At the wildflower schoolhouse. Yes. Any other comments? Uh, yeah, Charlie Curtis. Um, the more I study about wind and solar, the more disturbed I get about putting these things all over our township and our community. Um, the more questions I have and the more questions I feel like I, I need to get answered before I'd be satisfied with anything, you know, close to mandating, uh, you know, these industrial wind turbines. For example, the more I study, the more I see that all of our electrical costs are going to go up. I want to know if any of you have done a study on what it's going to cost us in the future uh, by putting this grid in of, of wind turbines that's going to increase electrical costs. Has there been any, have you it's done any our, work on that? It's out of our hands. Well, it's not out of your hand. You're going to get a permit request to put these things in. That's in your hands. You have to make the decisions you can't just say it's out of your hands. You're, you're, you're determining things that will affect this community forever. And one of the things that it's gonna do, and wherever I live, if you look at Germany, if you look at Austria, if you look at other countries that are heavy into um, industrial wind turbines, they've all had their electrical costs go up significantly. Robert Scott says, hey, 70 bucks we can kick in a year and we can cover all the, all the supposed monetary benefits from Apex Wind mm -hmm. and cover all that stuff and not have all these things all over our community. Well, the, the, the increase in electrical costs that we're all gonna have are probably gonna be way more than $70, $70 a year. I've got articles here that says, chaos costs, why intermittent delivery of wind and solar causes crippling power co uh, crises. Add intermittent wind and solar to a power grid and crippling power prices follow as night follows day. Why would that be? You're asking the wrong people. I know, but this is, you need to understand this so you have the answers to that. You're making the decisions. I want to have an answer as to well, how, what my electrical costs, and I imagine the rest of us here would like to have an answer of what our electrical costs are going to go to? Why would why would they go? Why would they increase? Because wind energy is so inefficient. At best, thirty they run thirty percent of the time, and if it has thirty percent efficiency, if it's running, you know, in, in, at full power, it's, they did a study in Europe. They were running at thirteen percent efficiency. Uh, all wind and solar additions need gas and or coal backups. So there's a duplication of effort here. There's no need for these things. There's absolutely no need for them. And they will raise our electrical costs, as the, these people say, as night follows day. You should, uh, you should know what our, I, my question is, I want to know what these costs increase in our households are going to be because of this. Did you know that um, four acres of a gas-powered plant will require 2,500 acres of monstrous wind turbines to make up that electrical 
uh, amount. That's 625 times in land designation for wind turbines that a gas-powered, if you, if you want electricity in this community, put a gas-powered uh, electrical plant here somewhere on four acres instead of requiring 620, 625 times the space. Not, I mean, this is just one factor. There's hundreds of fact, negative factors in my mind. I can't, I'm just an average idiot trying to learn about this stuff, and I haven't found anything good about putting wind turbines in our communities. It's money, money, money. Nobody is doing the research to give us the answers to these things, like why these why our prices are going to go up. What's going to happen to our communities and the, and the degradation of our community because of all this stuff? And it's, it is your responsibility. You're, you guys are making these decisions. You need to do the research. I, I, we've, this group here has way more research than what you've done, basically, in my thinking. And I challenge you to do what's right and get the information and understand that, that uh, you know, the increased costs of all this stuff, this is not just green energy. This is not just a beautiful thing. This is, this is dangerous for our community. That's it. A couple of comments with the bus tour. I don't know if you knew, Apex was approaching all of the Amish in the community. And they came in in December, I think it was, January, somewhere in there. Had a meeting. They brought pizza, pop, all that stuff to shoes and ice cream. And explained all the wonderful things of Apex and these wonderful turbines. Um, then a month later, a month and a half, during all the COVID crazy, like seriously COVID crazy, they had a bus tour with all the Amish. And I was on that tour. The only reason I was on that tour is because I worked with the Amish, and they asked me to go. And at that point, I wasn't, I wasn't against, I wasn't for the turbines I wanted to see. Um, since then, doing research, doing understanding, I'm not interested in the turbines. We moved here seven, six years ago, bought a little farm, built the farm up. Now we're putting our house in, and now we're being invaded with turbines. I come from Cleveland, Ohio. I know what noise is, and I don't want it. This young lady was saying about the flickering. Is this not telling you right here what the problem could be? I understand the flickering because I do have problems with it too. She can't do her work for two or three hours because of this. And yet you, because we're going to make $30 million, maybe, in 50 years, don't forget, Maybe. this is this is a 35-year turbine, plus 15 or 10, plus 10 more. So 50, 55 years, $30 million. That's a million dollars a year, and it'll start high, it'll go low as depreciation. In 10 years, when they come in and they now get rid of their turbines because they have to replace them in 10 to 12 years, you've got no money coming in. And this is also being based on what they're producing. Understand also, you want to talk about the um, upgrade or the prices. Look at consumer energy. I have consumer energy at my home. In January of this year, our electricity went up 11.5%. In February of the same year, one month later, consumer energy went back and said, oops, we need another 9%. Well, then they didn't get it. So what did they do? They turned around and from the summer... From 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. every night, we paid 50% more for our electricity. The time when you're washing dinner or you're washing clothes, you're cooking dinner, you're doing dishes because you came home from work, we had to pay 50%. And if you don't believe that, that is easy to find out. I mean, we all knew it. My, my electric bill has gone up considerably, approximately 35 to 40% since I've moved here. And consumer energy, if I recall, is one of them that is stouting. They've already stopped building and stopped purchasing these turbines because they've got enough. The problem is, is they're making our the residents broke. I mean, I'm I can't afford the electricity. Go to my house right now. You'll see in, in 20 minutes when I get home, 
it's going to be dark one light I use at night. And my electric bill is $150 a month. Mm. I live in a freaking mobile home. Yes, I have a freezer, a washing machine. We're going into a small house. We're going to do everything we can. You want these turbines? The other problem with those, there is no battery backup. You can't run solar and turbines without a backup because once it fills the grid, they get shut down. If you shut them down with no battery backup, they're not going to do anything. So you really need to think about this. You're going to destroy your community. You are going to have people want to move. I can assure you, all the work we've done on our farm for seven years, I will go. I'll find a place that I know will not take turbines, and I will move. I'm done. I don't, I moved to a quiet place. You're talking about your lawyers and all these. Check the counties that your lawyers live in, the townships. The mm -hmm. one lawyer for our township lives in Grand Haven. Read their ordinance. You want to talk about strict ordinance, 150 feet for a turbine is all they're allowed. Mm -hmm. Don't believe me? Read the Grand Haven ordinance. Mm -hmm. He is the lawyer. He lives in that township. Yet he's turning around and telling us that we can't be restrictive. That is garbage. If you can't be restrictive, you know what? I want to open myself up for marijuana production here. Mm -hmm. I will give you more money for my marijuana production, and I'm not going to be blowing people's heads off. <laughs> All I'm going to have is some good green stuff growing. <laughs> not a reader, but I'm serious. Look at all the money coming in from that. Amen. So please, save this community. There's other ways. The $70 a year. Do you know $70 a year? I figured this out last week. $70 a year per family for our county. I will chip in 70 bucks a year for my family. I'll, I'll even give some for others that maybe can't afford it. That would bring in, in 50 years, that would bring in over $53 million. $53 million in comparison to the $30 million at Apex. And guess what? I'll give you that 70 bucks a year for the next 50 years, just so I don't have to look at those things. Thank you for your time, sorry. Any other comments? Yeah, Apex, they're going to put 500 yards of cement in the ground to hold them up. They're never going to take that cement out of the ground. Any other comments? And uh, them blades are non-recyclable. The turbines come from China, and the wires come from China, too. Where is the benefits for the U.S. citizen, and uh, the government is subsidizing Apex building them. Then Apex would turn around and sell them to consumers or DTE. If they had to pay for them themselves to sell them, they would never build them because they're too costly. Yes, Larry, you said you really don't have any say in this. And I am so confused with the way the government works. If the Planning Commission comes up with a plan, you guys have to approve it. That's so ultimately, when it gets down to the final trigger, it's you guys' decision. The Planning Commission can tell you anything they want, but you have to agree on it. And she is more than 100% right. The attorney that they addressed a month ago at the meeting lives in Grand Haven. He's switching ships, and their pipe is 150 feet, and that's satisfactory. They're not refusing to have turbines. They're just saying, this is what we want. Grand Haven, beautiful. The lake, you see the scenery and all that stuff. Lakeview is just as beautiful. Look at your sign on 46, live, repeat, shop, do whatever. It's a gorgeous town. The surrounding towns are beautiful. I'd love to see them stay the same. I don't want to look at a turbine. Mm, they, they're... I won't go on anymore. You've probably heard it over and over again. So. And there's, there's nobody that has, that doesn't have electricity in this area that wants electricity. So there is not a need for the turbines. Any other comments? 